live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. We have failed our students, our staff, our community by not having accurate, reliable information. That was San Antonio ISD Superintendent Jaime Aquino this afternoon as he announced the district has canceled classes at all of its schools for the rest of this week because of problems keeping the heat running. Aquino said 70% of SAISD schools had heating problems amid this cold snap and they need to make repairs and check each campus. Garrett Berger tells us exactly what went wrong. The heat's out at San Antonio ISD. Now, so is school for the rest of the week. We're not going to open a single school until it is warm, safe, and a good place for learning. Superintendent Jaime Aquino said all 98 schools were checked Monday, but at some, the boilers programming hadn't been properly overridden so it could run around the clock in the cold. Because as a result of that error, led to major issues in our infrastructure in terms of the boiler pipes breaking, breaking down, they completely froze. At other schools, the system just had issues, he said, even though the district is in the midst of replacing numerous HVAC systems with bond money. We know that some schools operated without any issues, and we also know that in some of them, it was just 10 or 20 percent, so one or one or two classrooms. He also said the district is underfunded with aging infrastructure. We've had to defer maintenance because of our financial situation. The district had already canceled class at 20 schools this morning because of heating problems and burst pipes, and another 11 were canceled through the day. It was getting colder. The stair, the stairways, the theater room, the band halls outside, and the gym. The gym was the coldest. It's now clear the problems were even more widespread. But Aquino said they can't close a school unless they've contacted all the parents. Those two that were early released or closed, the magnitude of that problem was at a 100% capacity. In some cases, we only had the cafeteria or we had two or three classrooms. The district is still investigating what happened, he said. People will be held accountable, but also there are systemic issues that we need to address. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now, when the SAISD superintendent noted that the district has deferred doing some maintenance, he talked about how funding from the state has not increased since 2019, specifically something called the basic allotment. There's a case that explains for that. Scan this QR code to watch that episode that explains what the basic allotment is and how the state of Texas funds public schools. You can find this on YouTube, KSAT.com and all of our streaming platforms. All right, it was a cold one this morning, and we are not quite done with freezing temperatures just yet. We're going to get a little respite, though, Adam. Yeah, and tomorrow afternoon may fool you because it will be right near 70 degrees, but don't let it. We're going to wait several days before we put our potted plants back outside. Earlier this morning, started in Kerrville at 13, 17, 17 Stinson on the south side, 18 officially at the International Airport in town, and widespread teens to start the day today. But we did make it into the 40s. 46, our high temperature here in San Antonio. Notice that average being 63. Now, the temperature trend for the rest of this evening, it's a quick drop. By 9 o'clock, we're at 36, freezing at 1 a.m., and then tomorrow morning right near 30 degrees. Temperatures have trended a little bit cooler than previously anticipated for tomorrow morning. So Bernie Bulverde, 27, Seguin, New Braunfels, 30 degrees, Divine Casterville, 27 to start the day tomorrow. Around San Antonio, anywhere from 28 to 31, so another freeze to start the day tomorrow. More freezes ahead. We'll talk about when it's safest to get the plants back outside and you don't have to take all the necessary precautions and a change in our weather pattern, what it means for rain chances and how much we could get in just a bit. All right. Thank you, Adam. And you know, when it's this cold, you don't want to have car problems. You certainly don't want to have a car fire. That's apparently what is happening right now at I-35. These are the southbound lanes. This camera's at I-35 and Ben's Engelman. You can see that vehicle that's kind of off to the side and a lot of water that's poured across the rest of the pavement. It's down to one lane right now. Again, this is I-35 at Ben's Engelman, the southbound lanes. You can see down to just one lane right now as they try to clean up. The fire is out. Now the cleanup is underway. 
Conservation and preparation are some of the reasons that ERCOT officials believe the power stayed on during this week's frigid temperatures. You weren't alone if you wondered whether the Texas power grid could handle this weather, especially after the winter storm of 2021. Well, today, Pablo Vegas, the president and CEO of ERCOT, says the Texans who conserved energy after ERCOT asked for that twice this week made a difference. We saw a significant change in how much energy was being consumed uh, during that window. So that had to have been a combination of the government agencies, uh, residential homeowners that adjusted their thermostats. Vega says that ERCOT has made several changes since the winter storm of 2021. You can watch our full interview right now on KSAT.com. The family of a 13 year old boy shot and killed by a San Antonio police officer now filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the officer and the city. The family of Andre A.J. Hernandez made that announcement outside the U.S. federal courthouse. The shooting happened in June of 2022 after police say Hernandez rammed a stolen car into a police unit on War Cloud Street. Chief William McManus at the time said Officer Stephen Ramos feared for another officer's life and shot Hernandez. Hernandez later died at a hospital. A grand jury did not indict Officer Ramos for that shooting. The lawsuit states Hernandez's vehicle was completely boxed in and he was shot before he had a chance to comply with officers' commands. This lawsuit is my voice to, to the city of San Antonio. It is not okay to shoot and kill my son because he was running scared. The lawsuit also claims the officer used excessive force and violated Hernandez's Fourth Amendment rights. The family seeking unliquidated damages requesting a jury trial as well. A man on trial for capital murder had part of his defense fall apart today as the woman he claimed ordered him to commit the crime denied all of his accusations. Hilson Avila Rodriguez is on trial for the murders of Nicholas Milanovic and Julia Wright back in 2018. Erica Hernandez was there as the defendant's ex-girlfriend took the stand. Do you have any connections to uh, the Mexican cartels? No, sir. Did you at any point threaten the defendant in this case that if he didn't go and hurt some people or kill some people, uh, you would have him killed or hurt? No, sir. Melissa Cortez denying all allegations Hilson Avila Rodriguez made about her to police. It was a key part to his defense as he claimed he feared for his life because Cortez, according to him, was a drug kingpin and had threatened his life if he didn't commit the murders of Nicholas Milanovic and Julia Wright. Cortez says she was unaware he even made those accusations. She later revealed the day the murders took place that Avila Rodriguez went to her home and changed clothes. Clothes she later handed over to an attorney friend who gave them to police. She also mentioned a lockbox he had with him. I stated in the statement that he was looking for <clears throat> drugs or money. Okay. And instead, what did he find? A methadone bottle. Did the methadone bottle have anybody's name on it? It says Julia. That pill bottle remained in her possession and later gave it to police. The clothes and pill bottle were key in getting Avila Rodriguez arrested and charged in this case. The state is close to wrapping up their case. The big question is if Avila Rodriguez will be taking the stand in his defense. If that happens, that would take place tomorrow. A reminder, we are live streaming this trial. You can watch on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and KSAT's YouTube channel. At the Canaries Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland spent the day in Uvalde ahead of the Department of Justice releasing its report on the law enforcement response to the shooting at Robb Elementary. That report is expected to be released tomorrow. There will be a news conference on that report tomorrow at 1.30. The DOJ says the purpose of this report is to provide an independent account of law enforcement's actions on that day. It comes more than 18 months after the shooting that killed 19 children and two teachers. We'll be streaming that news conference at 1.30 tomorrow on KSAT.com. Today, state authorities gave Border Patrol access to the boat ramp at Shelby Park in Eagle Pass. But Texas authorities continued to block agents from conducting other normal duties in that zone. The state took over the park in two and a half miles of the Rio Grande a week ago putting up fencing and gates around the area. The Biden administration issued a cease and desist letter to the Texas Attorney General 
asking to restore Border Patrol's access by Wednesday. No signs of that happening so far. The pandemic brought to light the mental health crisis within our schools with counselors overloaded. The state turned to a digital outlet. And districts across our region are using UT Health's online counseling network. Counselors, students and parents told Courtney Friedman the option has changed a lot of lives. It was a lot and we were all grieving in certain ways. Three years ago, the weight of the world seemed to fall on Churchill High School senior Yvette Tejas. My dad passed away November uh, 28th and our house actually flooded January 1st, so New Year's, and we were stuck in a hotel for almost six months. Consumed by anxiety and depression, she needed someone to talk to. School counselors were overwhelmed, so she was referred to an online counselor with T-Chat, UT Health's Texas Child Health health access through telemedicine. I mean, my dad was my best friend, and so he was like my go-to person. And then when I found this person, I was like, who are you? Where have you been my whole life? They were able to help her cope through that and um, open up again. Yvette's mom, Isela Chamberlain, overcome with relief, and she's not the only one. The burden's on you, yeah. and now this is able to take that off. Yeah, we, we're spread thin. You're the, sure. you're the only full-time mm -hmm. yes. counselor here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Northern Hills Elementary counselor Katie Robertson is dedicated to her students, but can't handle the immense load. Now she can refer students to teach at. What I'll do is I log in, then I just start adding in information. It could be academic issues, it could be anger or violence, it could be anxiety, and very often it is. She says kids who need extra care can get medication help and even be referred to other therapists. I did online and then I actually did the bereavement, the Children's Bereavement Center. It's a testament to the transition between the in-person, T-chat, and then further counseling like mm -hmm. at the bereavement center. Yes. So you've got it all. I have it all. I've <laughs> been through it all. Her experience so transformative. She's about to go to college to get a degree in psychology, helping others find the peace and strength that she's found. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Still ahead here on the News at 6, if you found yourself on a detour in Windcrest today, you weren't alone. A simple mistake that forced drivers to find a new route and how you might prevent the same thing from happening again. Being outside for any length of time in this weather we've been having can be a bit painful. Yeah, but the bigger pain is what it has done to some people's pipes. <laughs> Katrina Weber shows us one big break on private property that became a public problem. There is more than one way to break the ice, as these Windcrest City workers found out this morning. A leaky sprinkler system on nearby church property had water washing over the access road near I-35 and Walsham. With the frigid temperatures, morning drivers would have been on thin ice. Instead, they were forced to take a detour. Yeah, this has caused a big mess for everybody. This mess for the freeze. Javier Betancourt's plumbing company was called in to make repairs, a call he has been getting quite a bit lately. The cold weather and then the ice that it started melting, so yeah, that's what it puts there. Burst more and then they have more leaks. Across the highway behind a shuttered strip club, a frosty tree told the story of what also happened there. Another pipe on private property burst from the freeze and put the freeze on the road. With the temperatures warming up, the ice is soon to be a distant memory. But the repairs to those broken pipes, well, those could take days. Plumbers like Betancourt are all backed up. In the meantime, he offers some sage old advice for whenever weather like we've had hits again. Just let the water run in when it's below 30 degrees, 27 and try to cover the pipes. There are small steps, he says, that could prevent big problems. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, we got a break from this freezing weather, at least for a bit. I've been looking forward to 70s all week. Adam Kasky. <laughs> you get it for at least one day. Yeah, it's, hey, it's something. And when you That's say se 70s, it's a little aggressive, but 70, yes, yeah. okay? A little optimistic, okay. Yeah, and, and for a few hours tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be about 70 degrees, so that's about it. But we have more freezes to talk about over the next several mornings. Let's get right to it. And I know the forecast may show a degree or two above freezing officially here or there in the next uh, four mornings. Just be prepared for a freeze 30 tomorrow, 34 Friday, 25 Saturday morning and close to a freeze again on 
Sunday. I wouldn't put the, or actually I'm going to say I'm not going to put my potted plants back outside until we get into Sunday afternoon or even safer yet on Monday and then next week, warmer mornings and better rain chances on the way. Now tomorrow morning we'll be back near and even slightly below freezing. This is from Seguin earlier today. KSAT Connect user and KSAT viewer posted this on the windshield. A little bit of frost. I love the beautiful patterns the frost takes and I do anticipate this a little bit tomorrow as the temperature drops a little bit closer to the dew point and temperatures below freezing. A little bit of frost on the windshield if you get it. Just turn on your vehicle, check your vehicle about 10 minutes before you have to leave. Turn it on early and get the defrost going on the windshield and you'll be fine uh, to drive away by the time you have to leave. 30 in the morning tomorrow, but 20s in outlying areas. We talked about that earlier. 70 in the afternoon. Look at that 40 degree temperature jump. That's amazing. So jackets in the morning, short sleeves and any outdoor activities good to go tomorrow afternoon. And it will be right around 70 degrees. Rio Medina. In the 70s, 73, Myra's going to be uh, reporting from Bandera at 75, right? Maybe Utopia as well in comfort, 75. It's short-lived. By Friday, we're back into the 40s for highs. Same story Saturday. Sunday, near 40. So enjoy tomorrow. Embrace it. I actually have to use it strategically, and I know some of you can actually relate. I honestly say this for uh, putting the urethane lacquer on my thermometer boards because you got to have the right temperatures. And tomorrow's the only day to do it. Friday through the weekend. Steve, don't give me that look. He looks over at Meyer like, come on. Also, it's going to be windy on Friday. Coming up at 645, we'll get more into the winds. A lot of people have work to do outside and you need appropriate temperatures for dry times and applications. Steve, you're welcome. Things aren't going to just lacquer themselves. Thermometers don't <laughs> lacquer themselves, my friend. Those urethanes need a nice, good movement. Yeah, and maybe, a, up, maybe a lacquer cast. <laughs> lacquer cast. I like this. I can get on board. <laughs> Let's talk about our rain chances. Okay, here are our rain chances. Zonal flow right now, fairly west to east, just a little dip in the mountains and uh, in the Rockies. That's why there's some snow there, but it's going to turn what we call meridional, more of a north-south flow, and that's when things get active. And we're going to see some activity starting on Sunday. We'll get this dip in the upper level flow starting to dig into northern Mexico. So rain chances rise through the day on Sunday, peak Sunday night, and then right now guidance is indicating this system is going to linger and sit tight in northern Mexico, which is good for our rain chances most, if not all of next week. Overall rainfall potential, preliminary, preliminary Preliminarily speaking, this isn't through Saturday. This is actually over the next seven days, one to two inches. Of course, there's still a lot of time between now and then, and you'll want to check back in for updates. 40% chance Sunday afternoon, 70% chance Sunday night, and then a 60% chance Monday and Tuesday, even next Wednesday at 40%. So we like what we're seeing in terms of the pattern shift into next week with not just rain, but warmer temperatures to keep it rain and of the liquid variety. <laughs> but tomorrow, lacquering weather. Right That's there. right, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss it. Thanks, Adam. Lacquer away, my friends. All right. It is a big honor to be part of the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame, Mary. Yes, I need to go back and do my research and just look at all of the wonderful historical figures that have existed in the San Antonio sports scene. And four of them newly inducted this morning. It's an exclusive club. We'll bring you front and center from this morning's ceremony coming up. And I know it's hard to turn the page because the NFL playoffs are still going on and especially for Cowboys fans, but the picks in the 2024 NFL draft are pretty much set. We'll show you coming up. This morning, four San Antonio all-timers were inducted into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. International champion hurdler Anjanette Kirkland, Utah Jazz CXO Andrea Williams, Judson High School football legend Jim Rackley, and Julius Whittier, the first black Texas football letterman, all receiving the honor. San Antonio Sports CEO Jenny Karn said calling the inductees to tell them the big news was priceless. It's just an incredible privilege to hear the, the pride, the excitement, the surprise, the honor that they all feel. The humbleness and 
um, the gratitude. Coming back home to San Antonio where it really all started is just so very special and I could not be more proud to represent this extremely wonderful city um, and to be with all the inductees and the community today. It is extra special to be part of this class. Oh man, it was a special morning. The four inductees legacies will live on forever. The San Antonio Spurs road trip continues in Boston this evening for a date with the Celtics. The Spurs looking to bounce back from their loss at Atlanta on Monday. Now ahead of tip off Derek White of the Celtics and former Spur was ruled out of the matchup with a left ankle sprain. Head coach Greg Popovich poked fun saying he's afraid of the Spurs, but we all know White was a fan favorite when he played in the Alamo City. Kelvin Johnson recalling how White took him under his wing. It just makes me smile, man. Um, he's a he's an amazing dude. He's a great basketball player, but even even better person and uh, you know, big brother, friend, whatever you guys want to call it. But uh, he's definitely someone, you know, um, as me a young player coming up, I definitely looked up to in the, in the Spurs organization. And to see him flourishing and um, you know having success is, is definitely huge. And um, you know, I love to see it uh, each and every game. Well, the Spurs hoping they can pull off the upset tonight without White in the lineup as four and a half point underdogs. Tip off is at 630 and we'll have a full recap of the action tonight on the night beat. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys season is over and I'm sure as defeated fans are right now, it's tough to turn the page. However, when it comes time for the 2024 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys officially hold the 24th overall pick in the first round as a result of losing their wild card game. Dallas picked in that exact spot two years ago and got Tyler Smith. The Texans are plenty busy preparing for the Ravens in the divisional round, but Houston will have the 23rd overall pick as a part of a trade with Cleveland in 2022. And the Texans play the Ravens in Baltimore at 3.30 on Saturday, and you can watch it here on KSAT 12. Yeah, that's the best part. Mm -hmm. You have to oh, change yeah. the channel. <laughs> Just keep it on there until Saturday. There you go. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Mary. Thank you, Mary. All right, we're answering some big questions about blood donation in our KSAC Q&A next.